Listen, alcohol is just out in 2024. There is a rising trend of going alcohol-free or being sober curious, and alcohol the truth is, it's just bad for you and can famously impair your sex life. So if you're looking for another way to unwind, relax, or just have fun, I cannot recommend Vaya's THC gummies enough. Vaya has gummies for every occasion, whether it's to improve your sleep. I love their sleep gummies. I take them everywhere. Your mood or your focus. They even have an aphrodisiac gummy called High Love to boost my arousal levels. High Love has a unique blend of cannabinoids and aphrodisiac exotic herbs that are known for their libido enhancing effects. So I've been using Vaya for a while now and I absolutely love them. They're a super trusted company. They use premium hemp, natural ingredients, and they're known for their premium indoor THCA flower. All their products are made here in the U.S. They got quick and discreet shipping to all 50 states so you can all enjoy them, not to worry, and also super affordable. So head over to viahemp.com and use code EMILY at checkout to save 15% off your order. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Use code EMILY at checkout for 15% off your order and let me know what you think. Urinary tract infections are extremely common. Around 1 in 2 women and 1 in 20 men will get a UTI in their lifetime. Plus, once you've had one UT challenge, you're way more susceptible to another in the future. That's why you just need Just Thrive's UT123. This product can actually prevent UTIs while maintaining your urinary tract health. UT123 targets both immediate and long-term relief. We've all heard to drink cranberry juice for your urinary tract, but did you know that for the full effects, you need the whole cranberry? Not just juice, but the skin, flesh, and even the seeds. Well, UT123 uses superior ingredients that utilizes the whole fruit. This supplement truly is the full package. So if you're someone who struggles with the constant urge to urinate, a burning feeling when you pee, pelvic pain, or just want to be proactive in your urinary health, Just Thrive is for you. Just Thrive is so confident you'll love their product that there is a 100% money-back guarantee on every purchase made through JustThriveHealth.com. And for a limited time, you can save 20% off site-wide at JustThriveHealth.com with promo code SEXWITHEMILY. That's JustThriveHealth.com and use code SEXWITHEMILY for 20% off your order. You're going to love it. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. I need to tell you about one of the great companies that's keeping my show free. Crazy Girl is an amazing product line that, well, makes you want to get naked. Crazy Girl's Wanna Be Naked Intimate Shave Cream, also known as their infamous Coochie Cream, will make you crazy happy because it prevents ingrown hairs and shave bumps. It's especially good for all those tender places. If you want to get the Wanna Be Naked Intimate Shave Cream or any of the other amazing products at crazygirlproducts.com, like their orgasm gel and diva dust. Use coupon code EMILY25 for 25% off anything. That makes the shave cream only $13. Do you know how expensive a wax is? That's coupon code EMILY25 for 25% off anything at crazygirlproducts.com. Or you can visit sexwithemily.com and get all the info you need there. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the show. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. I no longer have the Friends with Benefits program. My podcast is completely free so that you can always enjoy Sex with Emily. Thanks for listening. Look into his eyes. They're the eyes of a man obsessed by sex. Eyes that mock our sacred institutions. Bedroom eyes, they call them in a bygone day. Hey, Emily. You got a boyfriend? Because uh, my man E here, he just got his heart broken. He thinks you're kind of cute. The girl's got to have her standards. Oh, my. Do women know about shrinkage? Isn't it common knowledge? What do you mean? Like laundry? It shrinks? Can we not talk about sex so much? Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I feel so good. Being bad feels pretty good. But you know, Emily's not the kind of girl you just play with. You're listening to Sex with Emily. We're talking about sex relationships and everything in between. For more information about Sex with Emily, go to sexwithemily.com, where you probably are listening to the show live right now, or hopefully you are. It's uh, live, free for everyone, every day, 1 to 2 Pacific Standard Time. We are doing a live one-hour show, Sex with Emily, all sex, all the time, all the sex information you need. So thanks, everyone, for listening to the show today. I'm here with The White Menace. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. And don't forget, people, we are at the Stitcher studio. So if you are listening to the podcast, you can listen on your smartphone, download the Stitcher app for free, and uh, you just type in your friends with benefits uh, member, <clears throat> right. Pat's word, one time, and then every single day it will update exactly. you and let you know that your podcast is there. 
Does Let's everyone go. know that becoming a friends with benefits, like friends with benefits member, what it's going to do for your life and your sex life and your relationships? Imagine every day you're going to have an hour of tips, of, of advice about how to improve your sex life, how to improve your relationship. We're going to be doing videos. You get exclusive answers to all your questions. It's like free therapy. It's like if you're a friends with benefits member. You get, you get on the top of my list. You write me a question, I answer you right away. Um, I answer for, through video, I answer on the show, and you're going to be notified of that, and you're gonna be, there's going to be special perks. You get free gifts every week we're going to be giving out. It's just lots of fun stuff. So please join the Emily Friends, the growing Emily Friends with Benefits bandwagon. I like to say family. Family. I couldn't think of that word. I was trying to think team, team? but family is the word. It's, it's the, the Friends family. with Benefits family. You know, a lot of people have been listening to the show for many years. I know, you know? many years. You're right. So. so we really appreciate that. And it's, um, you know, 15 cents a day is what it comes out to. It's four ninety five a month or four forty nine ninety five a year. And it's sex with Emily all the time. All you ever, all you ever wanted and more. Yeah. So what's up? It's oh Friday. My God. It's what's Friday, going on? TGIF. Wait, 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 so, wait. Before we go on what you're going to do for the weekend and today. How's the dog? I'm having a hard time. Oh, <laughs> really? Well, I just really? uh, okay. I just got a new dog what? that I'm sort of borrowing it for 30 days. That's how it is now. Oh. So my friend Charlotte brought me this dog back that she thought would be the perfect dog for me, and I love this. I do. I mean, I, it's hard to you to bond with. Like, I, it feels like we are trying to bond with each other. And I didn't bring her today because my friend Charlotte wanted to take her running this morning and I didn't have time. And I'm like, great, you take her, I'll get her later. So I'm, I'm a little, I'm so used to have been living my entire adult life without any responsibility, mm -hmm. but yet it feels like it's time for me to have more responsibility and I don't want it to be like, be like yeah, the pathetic chick. It feels chick. like it's time for me to have more responsibility oh and I don't What's want What's happening? To be like, oh, sorry. Yeah, feedback. I didn't know oh, that yeah. was in there. I know, that's cool. So okay. anyway, I'm like, you know, so it's, it's a, I'm a little scary, but here's what I feel like. I feel like when I got my new, when I got my new cell phone, my droid, when I transferred from the Blackberry to the droid, yeah. they said I had 30 days to return it. And I, it wasn't until like the 29th day <laughs> that I fell in love, that I, I never fell in love with my droid, that I yeah. understood my droid, that I got it and I didn't return it. So I thought, okay, sure. When Charlotte is my best friend, she'll give me how much time, as much time as I want. And she loves this dog. And we've changed the name for the third time, too. So the dog's going to be a little crazy. The dog is going to be so confused. It's now her. Daisy. It was Dixie. And it was Scarlet before that. Because she's from the South. So we want to give her Southern name. She's a Jack Russell. And she's so cute. She's a little bigger of a dog. She's like, a, I wanted them more of a lap dog. I, I love cuddling. And I love the, the, the little dogs that you can carry everywhere. She's a little bit bigger. But she's sweet and adorable, and I'm and and here's but here's the biggest issue, mm -hmm. is that again I'm so used to, I'm such an independent woman. My life is very much revolved around what I have to do and running, and I'm always running from one place to the next. I'm traveling here and there, and is my life conducive for a dog? You know, I don't think that I'm ever going to feel that it is, but I do love dogs. Like it's never going to be the right moment to get a dog. Can you just say that I was right all along? <laughs> Can you say that now or what? I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying that you're right or wrong because I might. it might be a, a match made in heaven and I have another three weeks to find out. I was out. so – my cousin uh, had an impromptu, impromptu visit uh, to San Francisco and I was talking about you last night and I said that you would probably get rid of the dog. This is what then. all my friends think. <laughs> you really think so? Yes. It's almost why I have to keep the dog just to <laughs> prove everyone that I can have the dog. No, don't do that and make no, your I'm life kidding. miserable. No, I'm kidding. I would never do that. Yeah. But I, I think that – I just think that I'm not – you know, change is hard for everybody. No matter what the mm -hmm. change is, it's always an adjustment. And I just feel like I'm going through an adjustment period of like yeah. having to take care of something other than myself. But think of like how less selfish I'll be. Like it'll be – I'll be so much more giving and open. Like to have this beautiful creature in my life. <laughs> it sounds uh, like a nightmare. Oh and uh, good luck with that. Thanks, That's honey. I'm say. so glad you asked. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but it's, I'm excited that it's the weekend. Hopefully, it'll be a really nice weekend. I plan I on working and I plan on going out tonight for a friend's birthday. And I might, and we're meeting up with, um, remember that guy I met a few weeks ago? I think I might see him. Okay. And, um, and then I'm going to see, I told you, Tales of the City, the play tomorrow night, yes. which is going to be really fun. And then, and then there's a bunch of guys lately that I told you I've met. I've gotten asked out, okay. I go through – like we all do. You go through mm -hmm. periods where you're up, where you're down, you're, 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 you can't meet enough people. Like you can't juggle them enough and then it's like where mm -hmm. you haven't gotten a text in a month. It's, like the, it's yeah. like the desert. So I don't know. But lately I've been getting hit up by a lot of guys. 
that I've uh-huh. met at different places. Like some of them I don't even remember. They're like, remember we met at so and so? Like they Facebook me or something. And no, I don't uh-huh. give them all my phone number, Menace. If that was your next question, <laughs> I am just and saying. I don't know what to do because part of me is like, I'm single, I'm dating, I'm ready to date, but I don't even know how I know them or who I met them or who they are. So then I got to Google them and figure out how I met them and are they cute? Or are they not? And then another guy in my building. Anyway, I don't want to talk about that. But, <laughs> but, but I just feel like I keep meeting guys who ask me. Anyway, it's nice. It feels really good for the yeah. ego. But I'm not sure that I even have time or I'm ready or I even like all of them or not. But that's what's going on. But I, so I think I'll have some dates this weekend, um, some working, some playing. What about you? You're going to some music festival and doing something backstage with someone famous. Yeah, I, I am doing that. But I have some other stories to share good. that happened today. Then I thought it was hilarious. Okay. okay? Do, all right. I have two stories. One's Facebook and one is email. So I'm okay. going to go with the email. So I don't want you to cut off the Facebook story because it's also good. So today I was I was at the office. It's Friday. Everyone's laid back, you know, whatever. And uh, I don't know why, but I started going into my Gmail account. And I was talking with my assistant. I was like, man, I have 27 gigs in my Gmail account. I can go back and see all my emails. Right. And my emails go back almost to like I think to 2005, 2006. Wow. Right? I have everything that I ever need. I just type it in. Boom. That's perfect. Some file that I need. It's there. Right. So for some reason, the email – there's an email of after I worked with you for the very first time. Oh, my and God. I I'm going to cry. <laughs> you're not going to cry because I read it and I thought it was hilarious. Tell me. You have to read it to me. Uh well, it's like uh, – Wait, wait. One this of was the, 2005 then? Yeah, this is – And it was the, the very first time we did the live Sex with Emily show in the studio. Yeah, it's the very first time I, I worked with you. Okay. Like, you, I think you were doing it before, but then they asked me. They go, oh, you know, she needs some help. Um, Uh-oh. I can't you know, believe could, this. Could you go on there and do it? Because I, so we set I've it done up this type of that show that What we were doing then, I started Sex with Emily as a podcast yeah. in my living room. Um, about five, six years ago. And then I got asked to do a live show on, can I say where? On CBS radio yeah. in San Francisco, a station that's no longer in business, but it was called Free FM and it was an FM talk station. And it was, and I, I was so honored. I was like, my little podcast in my living room, they want me to do a live show. I'd never been on the radio before. I had never been in a radio studio before. And it was very exciting. And then <laughs> I find out that I'm assigned to this guy, this menace guy is going to be my board operator, they said. Yeah. And producer. Uh-huh. And then Mendes and I met. So what happened? <laughs> so oh, goes, no. Are you going to embarrass me? Goes, no. So he goes, this is, um, it's 3-28-2006. Uh, one of the bosses asked me, you know, so how did it go? My reply was, <laughs> oh, no. They need some kind of training so they can understand how a show works. <laughs> <laughs> that was my reply. <laughs> That's all you said? And it's been a love affair ever since. And what did he reply after that? Uh, I didn't even look. But I, I, I just thought that, that I had part never. Was do you know that I had never been into a radio station until the night that I went live? Oh, no. I could, I could tell. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I okay. Could, did you find any other good emails? Uh, no, that was it. I just thought that was That is that hilarious. Was really so that's so 2006. So we yeah. have known each other for five years. Yeah. I did find a bunch of pictures where I was really skinny. So I was like, I got to go to the gym. I just have to. I know let, I've been talking about it for years. Let me see you skinny. Look. Oh my god! Is that how you were when I met you? Uh, n- I don't think so. I think I might have. Well, so I was cute, a little but bit. I think you're so a little cute bit. Now. I try. I try. But I want to. You know, I want to get fit again. I like that. I like that, that is a great story. That was okay. So but, 2006. Yeah. So yeah, that, I thought that was funny. That to is share. funny. You're like, she really needs help. <laughs> yeah, she needs help. Call nine one one. They need to understand how to do a show. I mean, there must I'd have been, been some in, other people. Oh my god, too. I was like hanging up on people. I had never been in a radio yeah. station. I didn't know what I was doing. And men was probably like, Ugh. and oh he, my you were god. You were cute then. You were like <laughs> sleeping in the station. You were working yeah. your ass off. I was trying. So here's the other story that okay. happened today. Because I was in the middle of a phone conversation with a friend of mine from L.A. And I just dropped the phone. Okay. Cause not was- because of what they were telling me, but what I saw on the internet. So I'm trying to say this without giving out names and people can figure out exactly who they are. But um, I had two friends in the industry that were dating. Okay. I knew the guy for my, my entire radio career. Okay. Everybody in radio knows each other. Right, exactly. Across the country. It's so small. It's like a tiny high school, Right. right? So he was dating somebody in the industry that I see a lot. Okay. Right? See how? Because Just they work. In passing they work, or you see her like you, bo- I, you I, bang her? No, I don't. No, I don't bang her. Oh, okay. I, I see you, her. You see her in the office. I see her in, in an office. In a an lot, office. Right. Right? Okay. 
and they were having a long distance relationship for like a really long time. And uh, apparently uh, they broke up. And so, you know, the usual thing is the, you know, the woman just ends up going, telling everybody, oh, I'm single. Blah, right. Blah, she goes blah. to Facebook. Change. Yeah. You know, and like I always say that which really annoys me is like how women, you know, have a parade and let everybody know that they're single. Some right? women. Some women. I'll say probably 95 percent. I'd women. say not. It's not that high. <laughs> I'd say the number's not that high, but go ahead. So anyways, so I'm on the phone with my friend in L.A. And then I pull up the Facebook and it's the guy. And the guy just added 15 new photos to his Facebook page. Of him. Of him. And I look on his page and it's him. And they just broke up like not too long ago. Okay. It's him and another chick. And they're in Jamaica. She's in bikinis. They're making out. They're on no the way. beach. No way. He's all hugged up. And I'm like, oh, my God. There's no way. And it sucks because everybody saw How that. long ago did they break up? I need I time. Was like, a week? Was, a month? It has to be a little over a month. Less okay. Than that. Oh, that's see. That's why you got to defend. <laughs> you got to defend. I do, but do you know what's crazy is what? like everybody had the same reaction. What like, was the reaction oh, like? Home, oh my god, what happens when she sees it? Or yeah, is she doing yeah, it on purpose? Yeah. Right. Like she's gonna go. Because you're more friends with her. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you the weird thing that that sucks. See, that's why I think this is okay. So, so there was a guy I was dating. Yeah. Let's say a year ago, just for shits and giggles. It wasn't yeah. even a year ago. It was about a year ago. We dated for about three months, and it was a pretty amicable breakup, but. There was a little issue at the end where we had a miscommunication and we haven't been friends ever since. Yeah. But I was home. So we broke up probably a year ago. So I was looking at my emails and someone wanted to see him. They're like, I was with a friend in Michigan. And yeah. she's like, oh, show me the picture of that guy you were dating. Da, da, da. So I pull it up and I realize we're not friends anymore. He defriended me. <sighs> but a week earlier, I had seen someone else. I'd gone to his page for some reason, not to stalk him, but uh-huh. it was like someone, I don't, I don't remember. I was like, oh yeah, here's who he is. You guys, I think it was for a work thing actually. I was like, you guys might, like, you might know some of the same people, whatever. So in the last week, he defriended me. We broke up a year ago. So for some mm-hmm. reason in the last week, he decided to defriend me and I don't know why. Now it's driving you crazy? Well, yeah, but like why Why a year later are you all of a sudden defriending me? Like I thought, am I posting too much? Did I, I never, I'm not posting pictures of me and guys, which I never post pictures of me and guys. Yeah. Yes, except for it's you. <laughs> I post pictures of me and Menace like all yeah. the time. But like, that's, I'm never like me and my guy, whatever. So uh-huh. anyway, I thought that was weird. But I don't know why. Like I'm like, what was that moment? It was like driving me crazy. And I was with my sister-in-law who is not on Facebook. Mm-hmm. she's never been on Facebook, doesn't like Facebook. And I was like, oh my God, he defriended me. And she was like, what are you talking about? Like it was her first, she'd never even seen Facebook. I she was like, doesn't know Facebook she drama? Does, she, no, she doesn't get it. And she's like, well, of course he did. You broke up with them. I'm like, yeah, 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 but you don't get it. We were friends a week ago. So what happened? And I'm like, oh, yeah. why do I even care? I'll let it go. Was there any so communication in that? Nothing. One? I have not talked to him in a year. So I just, all I know is like, maybe he got sick of seeing my posts. that Probably. were Probably. I would too. <laughs> of my posts? Yeah. Yeah, I get that you want someone out of your life that. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah, I get it. What's the what's cool is I remember I use a program where I don't even I am able to update it without even looking at it. You know, I know so, Hootsuite. Yeah, Hootsuite's my. And we need some help with that. The interns. Right. <laughs> We've been trying to do it, but it sometimes doesn't always work. Oh, yeah. um, okay, let me tell you a little bit about today's show. Okay. Okay, today's show is um, very exciting because it's Friday and we're all very excited here. We're all very turned on before we're even doing it. I've gotten turned on the last few days. You notice that? Yeah, what's going like on? I got like you all aroused by my own material. Yeah, I totally need to get laid. Okay, topics on today's show. We're going to be reading your emails that you send to feedback at sexwithemily.com. A lot of you also so easily can go to the Ask Emily tab on my website, Sex with Emily, and ask me a question. Some of the topics include not enjoying sex, not having enough sex, posing naked, and more questions about anal play. And then later, we'll be discussing and debating the things you should never, ever do in a relationship. Mance and I are going to be discussing. These are some common, commonly held beliefs around things you should never do in a relationship, and we're going to debate. Plus, we have a contest. It's your turn to give us your hottest sex tip. The best sex tip wins a sexy prize, so email us, feedback at sexwithemily.com or through the website. And um, then, yeah, that's what we're doing. And then we've got our poll info here. We can get to that in a minute. But do we have more to talk about? No, no, no. Nothing? Like, what are you doing this weekend? Like, Oh, uh, I do have to go to a birthday party right, in then- San Jose, California. So I'm going to go to that. And then I 
Saturday, no plans. And then Sunday, I'm going to the Mayhem Music Festival. Sounds sounds crazy. With uh, Megadeth and all sounds these. Sounds awful. Like, Do you have to work? Yeah, it's a work thing. Okay. Sorry about that. But I'll be at a festival all day. Okay. So, poll. Okay, we have polls on our site. Not only are you getting sex with Emily every single day for one hour, and you can do it on demand if you are Friends with Benefits member. Right now, a lot of people are watching live, but you can also get this on demand if you missed it from one to two. And we've got polls. So here's what we got. Here's our latest poll. And these are the answers. Okay. What is your favorite time to have? When is your favorite time to have sex? 19% said any time on the weekend. That was the least number. Mm. 21% said morning time. 23% said afternoon delight. And 37% said at night. You said you were a weekend person. I'm kind of a weekend person because during the week I'm just like. I'm too busy. I'm busy. Yeah. But I would do it at night during the week. Help me I go to sleep. Although I kind of wake up after sex, which is annoying because I'm like, let's talk. Not, no, I'm kidding. But oh. not, not, talk about the, <laughs> not talk about anything in yeah. particular. But like wow. sex wakes me up. And it's so such a bummer. It's like why men mm. are from Mars, women are from Venus and all that stuff they talk about. Like men fall asleep. I wake up. It is a problem. Yeah, that could be a problem because okay. I would die. Okay. So most people like <laughs> I've told like, women to shut the hell up. Have you? Yeah, I've told them like shut up. I think you kind of a dick. No. You mean? You don't say shut the hell up. I don't say shut the hell up. I say shut up. But you come across like you're sort of an ass to women, but you're. I don't think that you really are. No, but I say things that are not kiss assy. You know. No. I just. You know. I think you're just a sweet puppy underneath <laughs> oh, it all. Thank you. Um, okay, the, here's our new poll. How long do you wait to have sex? Everyone, go to Sex Only right now and vote. Five minutes. Number one, why wait? Let's get it on. Number two, around the third date which is a kind of a common, a lot of people say there's like the third, fourth date thing. Three, when we are in love slash married. And number four, after we've dated a few months. I'll say number three, when you're married. Oh, right. <laughs> right, Menace. Menace the virgin. Uh, you were going to respond or you want no, to I'm going to say, how long do you wait to have sex? I just say it when depends. the time. It depends. Case by the, case basis. Yeah, I say when the time is right. Why wait? No. Um, when the time is right. When the time when it feels yeah. right. We actually had that as one of the options mm-hmm. whenever it feels right. But that's what everyone would choose. By so the, I'm like, I'm not putting that down as yeah. an option. By the third tequila shot, I would say. Not the fifth because the fifth is a little old. What happens to the fifth tequila shot? You're, you're, you're too drunk? Yeah, and you can't. Do you really puke after five? No, I don't. Well, I would though. Oh, definitely you would. I puke after three. Yeah. I need more tequila in my life, by the way. Not for the puking part. I but got extra bottles at the house. I didn't tell you about two... Okay, huh. this is not related to sex, but whatevs. Okay. Two unrelated serious incidents I had that like hurt me, hurt me, hurt me, pain. The day I was leaving what? for Michigan, I had an accident at the gym. I what? fell onto a pile of weights and my whole forehead got – it was the size of a golf ball coming on my forehead. I tripped and like my head fell. You know how they line up all the weights? Like onto a 10-pound thing of weights. It was a golf ball coming on my forehead. All the men in my gym, you know, my gay, my gay yeah. gym, there's no – I've never talked to any of them. Like I don't have friends there. They're like, oh, my God, oh, my God. They were like, should we call 911? And they were huh? like – I was on the floor with ice all over – my whole body it was what? bruised, beaten, How come you just tell me right now? Because I, for, I left for Michigan for a week and uh-huh. I forgot to tell you. And it was like so embarrassing and they're all like, are you okay? Should we call an ambulance? I couldn't move for eight minutes. That's how bad I hurt myself. Knocked out. Just because I tripped like an idiot. And then they're like, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going on vacation in an hour. I'm flying. And they're like, I'm like, oh, does it look bad? And I didn't care how it looked, mm-hmm. but the guy's like, don't worry, honey. You can just put your bangs over. It'll be fine. Yeah. I'm like, I don't have bangs. <laughs> so anyway, it's been this really like huge thing on my forehead, but I think it's gone away. But that was really scary. Yeah. And then I got really sick in Michigan. Did I tell you that? I was yeah. like in bed for two days. But how bad is it that I tripped and fell? You're and then falling this apart morning, on me. But here's the thing. I walked to the gym this morning. I haven't yeah. been there since the incident. Yeah. And everyone at the gym, apparently, they're like, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you yeah. okay? And I don't even remember who helped me because I was so out of it. Like, I thought I was like, I thought I could die. I thought I could go yeah. to the hospital. I thought I had a concussion. But I didn't. You could have. I just wanted to there's, share that I with mean, you. I mean, there's uh, just yesterday. It's pretty tragic. Did you what? hear about the baseball th- incident? No. You didn't hear about that? No. It's Come on, all me? over the news, internet, television, what else? radio. I wasn't busy. I've been busy. Paper. For- Do you um, notice- it was the Oakland A's versus uh, some team I don't care about. Some other team. And uh, there were – some guy was – you know, he hit a foul ball, right? And uh, one of the players is like, oh, you know, it's a foul ball. I'm just going to throw it into the stands. Well, he didn't throw it far enough and one of the, one of the guys uh, reached over to the railing to catch it and then – Fell over the railing and he died just yesterday. 
In Oakland? No, not in Oakland, wherever they were playing. I think Indiana. I could be totally wrong oh on my the location. God. But he just fell and died right there. Oh, my Can God. Can you imagine awful. you're just hanging out? No, no, There's no. There's all these people just hanging out at the baseball no, no, game. No, no, like, He oh, just leaned over and he was like you, way up in the bleachers or something? Yeah, or? he went to go just catch the ball and he fell over, died right there. Did he fall into a group of people or he just fell flat on the he pavement? He fell like 20 oh, feet Oh, God, that's yeah. so sad. What a way to go. It sucks. I have to go to a baseball game next week. I yeah. have to be careful. I can see me doing that. Don't try to get the Can't ball. wear my five-inch heels trying no. to catch a ball. No. That is really sad. And, um, okay, so we could get into some sex in the news. Yeah. Unless you have anything else to share. What are you – are you okay? Yeah, I'm cool. Okay. I, it's just it's just weird. I, one of my cousins is in town. Um, I haven't seen her in 15 years. And she just like, hey, I'm here. Let's hang out. So we're like – we're hanging out at the cliff. No it way. Was a lot of fun. Yeah. Last night? Yeah. Is she staying with you? No, she's not staying. Okay. That's so fun. Yeah, she's she, just in town. Older, younger cousin? She's older. She's a reporter. She is? Yeah. Oh, fun. So, so you can take her out to – no, tonight you have plans. Right? No, yeah, yeah. We already hung out yesterday. Okay, got it. You're done with her. Okay. Um, this is some sex in the news, and then you just sent me one when we were coming in. Yes. Which you I better did. read it because – Okay. I haven't read it yet, but – I read it, and it's amazing. Okay. I'll let you read it when we get there. No, or do you, you want to read it now? Read it. Yeah. Okay. Women dies – okay. Men just sent this to me. I just sent this to you because you have a dog, and this is a sex show. <laughs> All right. You ready? <laughs> Women dies of allergic reaction to the dog she had sex with. And it's on Gawker, which is one of my favorite blogs. Let's yeah. see what it says. Hold on. It's coming up. That's uh-huh. hilarious. She had sex with her dog and died. No, it wasn't her dog. Check it out. There's the, Holy the full, moly. It's a full story. Jesus. It's After amazing. reading this weird news story, you will never have to read another weird news story ever again. It's everything. An insane premise, crazy people, crushing irony, a sex crime, and a sex crime. <laughs> they said that <laughs> twice. Oh, sex, crime, and a sex crime. It seems an Irish woman died after an allergic reaction to a dog, a dog she had sex with. Yes, really. From Ireland, the land of geniuses like James Joyce, Oscar Wilde, and Bono, comes the story of a 43-year-old woman who encountered a man in a bestiality chat room and then met him at his house in Limerick. She had sex with his Alsatian dog. Alsatian dog. I don't know how to say that, but other dog people probably do. And then had a severe allergic reaction shortly afterward, possibly from the dog's semen. She later died at the hospital. The incident like apparently took acting. place in 2008, but medical experts just confirmed the cause of death because the case is finally making its way to court. Oh, my God. The dog owner is charged with buggery yeah. for ordering the dog to commit the act. Buggery is apparently still a crime. Oh, my God. People are into, like, I'm just so not cool with bestiality. I'm cool <laughs> with most things. Yeah. But, like, dogs and sex with minors. It is not cool. It's not cool. Like, I... The it's dog not. can't consent that she yeah. died from the semen. Yeah. <laughs> she's a 43-year-old woman. Can't she just date online? Well, the, she's she, got she a was, fetish. She was talking. No, she was she talking. She met him at a bestiality website online, but can she yeah. not go to a bestiality website? Can she just go to, like, Match yeah. in Ireland? I mean, people, you don't really need to have sex with animals. It's not cool. <laughs> Oh, my God. Is it because they're desperate? Is it because there's nothing else? No, there's something weird in their head. I know. That they're, they're into this. I know. People are into it. A lot, of, lot more in you know, a lot of different countries, it's commonplace. <laughs> it's um, common. That is crazy. Yeah. I okay. just thought I would bring it in. Because I appreciate you bringing whole, that in. The whole dog thing. And oh, my that. God. Like, oh, poor little, my poor little dog. I will not have sex with my dog. Okay. Okay. Please don't. Women solicit sex on Craigslist as her husband's ex. The latest in Craigslist hijinks, a woman places an ad. So you got to pay attention to this because mm. I had to read it twice, which means that it's hard, which or just means that I'm slow. Women places an ad soliciting sex on Craigslist only. Yeah. She gives her husband's ex-wife's address and phone number as the recipient. So she writes an ad and the mm. ad says, the ad says, I'm currently dating a decent man, but he's lacking some skills in the bedroom. It's, it's nice, but I need to be thrown around a bit and need to be dominated. That is exciting for me. I also like to take charge sometimes, but I need a strong man to keep me in check. Please be respectful if you do stop by. So so the, the Craigslist mm-hmm. ad gave her address and her um, phone number, and people just started coming by the ex-wife's house. What? So, well, this woman is remarried to the, her. The yeah. woman's, how crazy are people in this world? It's like that woman I was just seeing on television who did something because her, her – just people are just insane. I don't know. This is, this is totally unre- unrelated, but – just insane things that people do that I just – I'm such a peacemaker. Like I'm like a all about love, like you mm-hmm. know, make love, not war. Like who are these people who 
I mean, obviously she's got an issue with her husband's ex-wife yeah. and wants to pay her back for something. God knows what. But like people do mean conniving things. Yeah. She sits up and comes up with this plan. Like, do you think it's impulsive? Like, do you think she just does it and she regrets it? Or do you think there's like she has no regrets and just thinks that she's in the right? Um, I think sometimes it is comp- compulsive. Right. Yeah. Because I, you know, do you ever write? Angry emails. I do, but I don't send them. You're supposed to wait 24 hours before you write. You write an angry email to someone. You're, oh. supposed, to, you're supposed to sit on it for 24 hours. Problem with me is you I have too. I have too many emails to write, so I just shoot them out there. You, you know, that you, you and your whole one sentence emails. Yeah, no, but I'm a really, I'm like a dick in them. Like it's usually me frustrated because like somebody won't work as I much know. as me. I know, but um, yeah, yeah, but I think yeah, some of it it might be just in the moment. You know, right. But so, are some of it's like really plotting things out. Did you hear about that woman? I saw this on CNN. She, her son didn't make the baseball team. And this was like two weeks ago. And no. she was threatening. She literally sent threatening letters to the coach uh-huh. and a few other people at the school saying like, I know where your children go to school. Mm-hmm. I'm going to come and get you. I can't believe you didn't accept it. Like you better watch your back. Like threatening that she was going to kill them because her son wasn't yeah, accepted to the basketball team or the baseball team. Like you do that verbally right. when no one else is around. Like she was like arrested. <laughs> like you don't threat. Like you just don't yeah. do things. But, but I'm like, what is she thinking? And she did it a few times. She kept calling, calling. It was like she was like threatening them for Rizzo. Well, it just shows that, you know, af- out of all the stories we just read right now. Yes. That uh, it just proves that women are crazy. They're out of their effing mind. That they. <laughs> Men do crazy things too. No. There was a man who let a woman sleep with his dog in that story. Let's just not forget that. Yeah, but it's the woman that was actually doing the act. You know, it, it just proves that, you know, that women are just not rational <laughs> at all. We are rational. We're just no. different than men. So it's hard for you. We've got hormones that are different. We've got estrogen. Yeah. We've got other things going on in our brains that you guys will never understand. Like that PMS, for example, irrational. we should do, I should explain that. I mean, PMS is like, we really. We really feel like we're going insane at those, those times or we really can't control it. It's like – I mean you can. There's things you could do like don't drink caffeine and take certain vitamins and like mm-hmm. you can do things so you don't get as pms But basically when you're pms you're like I want chocolate. I want caffeine. I want all the things that you're telling me not to eat and give it to me now or I'm going to kill you. Yeah. And you really get this – like I remember when I don't get it that bad but what I did, it's like – those five days a month or a, mo- a week a month, I always think about that when it used to get really bad because for women it goes in phases like sometimes your PMS is really bad and sometimes it's three days or seven days. But when it's a seven days, I'm like, that's a quarter of my life. I'm spending wanting to kill everyone who walks in my path. Like I literally <laughs> got to the point where I'm like, I, I, you get – you you your mind really does change and you really – everything that was okay yesterday, like you loved your neighbor, yeah. you loved your boyfriend, like everything was perfect. You want to kill them or you just can't stand them or people – you have no low tolerance for things like – it's we can't do anything about this. They haven't like just made a magic pill for that yet. I mean, they have like Prozac and stuff like that you can take, but I don't Prozac, know. but this this only happens for what? How many? You can take actually. There are drugs that women. If you're if you happen if you're a woman listening to this or you're dating a woman, there are certain medications that you can take only the week before your period to help prevent the strong PMS syndromes. Wow. And PMS is can, really a disorder. Like it's in the it's in the the psych the um. The psychology manual, the DSM three R, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual yeah. of every every disease in the world, it is now in there. Like premenstrual <laughs> dis- syndrome is a syndrome and a disorder. You just brought up if you're with somebody that's having this. Can you imagine having that conversation? Um, yeah, um honey, so take a pill. Th- so there's but it, but it uh, wreaks these drugs. havoc. It wreaks havoc. <laughs> no, I know it's hard. A- she's going to kill you. Don't do it when she's PMSing. Make you less than a bitch than. <laughs> But if they Usually. do work, I know they work. Yeah. Like I've tried years ago. Like I used to have really bad PMS, and I tried some stuff, and it kind of helped. I don't oh, like taking anything. What would you do? I um, they're bad PMS. I would be really. I would. I would personally. <laughs> I would just hate everybody. Like I would be. I would. I was different. I would. I'd be really annoyed with everybody who came my path, uh-huh. and I just. I I couldn't get stuff done. I was super ADD, more mm-hmm. so than usual. Like. Um, I was not social. I didn't want – like everyone bugged me and everything yeah. in my life bugged me. And I only saw the negative and I couldn't see the positive. And it was just for a week and I would always cry. So I would always cry the day before my period. Like it was like clockwork. I'm like, <laughs> you know what? I'm getting my period Sunday and I know that tomorrow, Saturday, I'm going to cry about something. Everything's great right now. The sun is shining. Like I have a great job. Birds are birds are singing. And I'm going to cry. And sure enough, something would happen that would make me cry on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, always. It was like clockwork. It, it, it just it doesn't happen anymore. At least that's one 
that's you know one day out of the month. No, it was like seven that. days leading up to it. Of seven hell. days or five? Strict? No. Yeah, five to seven days. I'm just like in hell. And then the second you get, the second you, it's just like two. I know that. I remember reading somewhere like today we're going to be giving you tips on what you should never do in your relationship. And this is something that I read once that you should never ever discuss your period with a man. Like you should never even bring yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. don't even bring it up. And here I am talking about it for ten minutes. Yeah. So I'm sorry, but I think it's also a really important information to dispense. So it's I think if they say you shouldn't bring it up like with your – I mean, but but it's part of life. Do you feel bad for guys that have to deal with it or not? I feel that men are – that is, is a challenge. Part of it, it's just okay. part of it. It's part of being with a woman. And not, yeah. not all women have PMS. Not all women experience it. But mm-hmm. most women I know do or have at some point in their lives. Sometimes women experience every other month. Mm-hmm. It depends. Like sometimes, like our periods are different. Like sometimes you get really bad cramps. Sometimes you don't. It's just different yeah. every month. And um, but my PMS isn't as bad anymore. But if I ever see, you know, no. But don't ever say. And oh, here's what you don't do. If she is are you really right no, now? yeah. Don't ask. Don't say if she's bitching or she's upset. Be like, are you are you in the rag? Are you in your period? That is <laughs> oh, no. the worst thing you can do. You're gonna get punched in the face. Yeah. So never assume that if that. And just because we are perhaps we are PMSing does not invalidate the way we're feeling. We really are feeling those things. It just might be heightened by that. Okay. Can that I mean that seems a lot easier to deal with than what I saw on television last night. What did you say? Yes. On television last night, um, they had these documentary series on uh, MTV called True Life. And last night, uh, there was this girl that says, True Life, I have Tourette's. And it shows like her starting to hang out with this guy – uh, before they were together and then eventually uh, ended up having a relationship. But these are the things – and I give a lot of props to the guy that you know took this on. But these are the things that she was doing okay. in the show. Uh, she would faint. Just, you would just be walking down the right. street and then automatically she would just faint out of nowhere. Okay. And then he would have to catch her like every single time. Other things she would do where she would just tense up and she'd go <gasps> – and she would just hold her breath. And then – he would have to hit her on the chest and then she would go and she would start breathing again. Oh my God. Like it was like a tick where she would not breathe until somebody hit her on the chest or she would hit herself on the chest. Okay. That would be interesting to date someone with that, this scenario. So then this is the craziest part and I don't want to laugh at her. And she was, yeah, don't she, laugh was at her. Uh, she was laughing at herself okay. and she would make jokes about it. Right. So I feel fine. Yeah, and she would, did a reality show about it. So. Yeah. So she was, she was, it's, she was, it's fair yeah, game. She would make fun of it a lot. Right. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, they're sitting down on a bed and they're just having a conversation and then she just turns her head like the exorcist and she goes, I have the devil inside me. I have the devil inside me. And then she would just grab her neck and start choking herself. And then he would have to pull her hand off. How long were they dating? They were dating for like a few months. But the thing is, the only reason that they broke up because she was leaving for college and like she was – the whole deal was like showing the experience of like letting people – new people – did they show no, them but, intimate? Like were they intimately like – Yeah, they together? were like making out and stuff like okay. that on camera. But like those were just the couple things. That's crazy. That – you know, and I got to – you know, I have to give it to the guy that – Yeah, know, he, he must have really loved her. He goes through that. it. We it, all make sacrifices in relationships. Yeah, it was Relationships it was crazy. are never perfect, but that would be especially challenging. Yeah, and the craziest part that I thought about this is she goes to college and she goes into the dorms and she asks for a single dorm because she's like, I right. don't want to be distracted. Right. To somebody that I was living with, right? Totally. So they show like people just walking in and like she's introducing herself and telling everybody what's going on. And how come another girl walks in? She goes, "Oh yeah, I have narcolepsy." Right? Another girl walks in and just says that. Yeah, she's like, "Oh yeah, it's all good. I have narcolepsy." So then they show a whole crowd of everybody hanging out together. And then she so so one girl is like tripping out, saying she's the devil, and then the other girl just like falls asleep. Right in the mid conversation, falls asleep and like falls down. How? Where are? Where's this college? I don't even know. I, I never where is met, the college? I don't know. I where never met just, these people. <laughs> I never met anybody with narcolepsy ever. Me neither. But life. now and it's I, all over. The, everyone's yeah. always filming it. I have. I'm, I have friends have like mild autism, like not as extreme as that. Right. 
But um, I just thought it was like extremely That's interesting. That's crazy. That's and so interesting. I, if anybody like has stories like that, please email us feedback at sexwithelmy.com. You know, not to – but just say like, you know, I was dating a girl that was going Disabled, through Disabled. Have you dated anyone yeah. who has disabilities or is challenged in any way, uh-huh. physically, emotionally? What has that experience I, I, been I'd like? I'd be really interested in the in Yeah, the story I'd love like, to hear from you. Feedback at sexwithemily.com. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we got one more sex in the news. Okay, what you got? Okay, we got Heidi Klum pole dances for seal. Okay. How about that? Apparently, they have this amazing sex life, which she's always talking about. She loves doing pole dances for her husband, Seal, because she thinks it's important for married couples to have a healthy sex life. And she does Mm -hmm. that by dancing on the pole. Heidi Klum loves doing pole dances. The German supermodel who raises four children says it's important for married couples to have a healthy sex life and likes to spice things up in the bedroom. She said, there's nothing wrong with a nice garter belt. I'm not saying you have to put up your up a pole in your bedroom and start swinging off the rafters. But I do love to do that sometimes. So she's got a pole in her house. Mm-hmm. And she says she she they renew she renews her vows with Seal every single year on their anniversary. Says having a self, a healthy sex life is easy for her because she still finds her forty eight year old year old spouse very attractive. He's even hot when he's sleeping. He's a beautiful man. He's kind. He's a gentleman. And I watched him last night on stage, and he still rocks it. I'm like, yeah, that's my man. Wow. She met him in two thousand four when she was pregnant with another or someone else's baby. She said, I'm not someone who plays hard to get. This whole thing about, oh, let's exchange numbers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, the point is she's got it. She's got How would you feel? Okay, so I think pole dancing is kind of hot. I kind of want one of those poles. They were going to give me one once, a pole for my bedroom. I think that'd be cool. But yeah, I'm not that good sure, at it. i got to practice. Yeah, yeah. Make sure it's, like, installed Secure, properly. Right, because you know yeah, me. I I've call seen, it, would you come over and install my stripper pole, Menace, since you installed everything install else? install everything. <laughs> he installed my, my porn box. Yeah, and your uh, DVD player, your television. I know, you're the best that I haven't used yet. But Um, The other thing I was going to say is I've seen it on television so many times, so many pole accidents. I know. Because there's all these like television shows you don't watch, like Rock of Love and things like that where they have poles inside – like a lot of these MTV exactly. shows, you know, because the girls go crazy. Right, and they all fall. I've seen that. But yeah. this is what I want to say about this story, though, that I think that, that Heidi Klum, I love the idea of renewing your vows if you're married to someone. Mm-hmm. Because business, because being married to someone is like a contract, and you should renew it every year, every five years, whatever. I'm not saying you have to do it every year. But, like, what a, what an amazing thing to do to sit there and say, like, let's say our vows again to each other. Because when you, when you write your vows for your wedding, they're pretty intense, and they're pretty real, and they're, like, heartfelt, and they're, like, what you really are hope, what you hope will happen in the future, what you mm-hmm. promise, what you, you know, like your, your most, the mo what you value as the most important factors of your relationship, whatever you give them to each other, your vow is like, I promise I will never, whatever. I will always support you in all your endeavors. And I think that's amazing to say to each other every single year and to spice up your sex life and have a whole pole or do whatever. Like, yeah. like the, and they, you they, got they four Klum kids and just, you know, to be Heidi honest, Klum, four kids in a pole. That's hot. What? To be no. honest, I don't find Seal that attractive. <laughs> but she does. That's what's so amazing. I know. Amazing. That's what I'm saying. This guy's the luckiest guy in the world. I know. I know. Really? Yeah. I think he's attractive. And I love that they've been together for a long time and that they do that. So I'm saying with couples, because actually I'm going to get into emails next. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because we were reading through a lot of the emails today and they, there's happened to be a lot of them have similar themes. Okay. And, that, and a lot of us emails do have similar themes over time. And this is actually one of the most common themes. But for some reason today, a lot of them haven't to. And that is like, how do we spice up our sex life? We've been together a long time. What do we do? I'd say that's the most common question I get. I'd say that it's one of the top three questions I get asked on Sex with Emily is, how do we spice up our sex life? It used to be hot. It was rocking. We had sex 10 times a day. And now I can't even get my wife to do whatever or my husband sometimes. And so what do you just spice it up? So here, Heidi Klum, big, you know, she's busy. She's got a job. She hosts Project Runway. She's got four kids. I mean, I'm sure she's got lots of help and I'm sure she's got lots of nannies and stuff. But she uh, has a pole in her house and renews her vows. And I think that's awesome, the renewing the vows part especially. I just wanted to say that. That's weird because you're not really into marriage. I, I'm into, I, I'm into you're marriage. You're very anti-marriage. I'm not anti-marriage, Menace. That's so wrong. To said, I don't like when you say that. You said that Personally, marriage is for losers. No, I've never said that, never honey. You get married if you want to be happy. I never have said that. Please don't even say things like that because you know that's not true. I support marriage you have 100%. A tattoo personally, of it. personally, I'm not sure how marriage would, it will be in, in my, if it will be a part of my life. I'm uh-huh. not sure. I, I think it'd be amazing if it was, but I... I I completely respect and honor people who are in really good marriages. Like I look for them all the time. Like my friends who have wonderful marriages, my family is in wonderful marriages. My brother have been together with his wife for eighteen years. Yeah. Amazing. They're so happy. I think it's great. So I completely respect the unity of marriage. 
So for you to say I hate it and it's wrong is not true. It's just weird that you have a F marriage bumper sticker on your car. Yeah, what but I that's find. just for fun. Oh, okay. Just kidding. I don't have one. Thanks, Menace. Okay, ready? Emails. Okay. Just drop in a line to say, keep up the good work. Your show is awesome. Just when I think your show can't get any better, poof, the next day it moves up a notch. You are the mm-hmm. queen of the airwaves. Sincerely, your admirer. <laughs> we don't have a name there, but we yeah. just read that because that came in from a Friends with Benefits member. <laughs> All right. And um, You get pushed to the top when you're when you're a Friends with Benefits member, yeah, by the way. Yeah, exactly. And um, it is getting better every day. I have to say, uh, these shows, we're doing it every single day for an hour. Mm. Do you realize before people that you were getting one show a week for 45 minutes? Yeah. Which was a great show. But now you're getting five of those by listening to this show. By becoming a Friends with Benefits member. And you're getting video, video podcast. Video. You can watch right now. You right can right watch now you can watch your... me. You can watch me doing the show. Right now there is a camera on me, and um, it, which is awesome. Uh, for you, but and soon you'll be able to see more people in the studio, like Menace. Yeah, multi cams. Multi cams. Okay, I just, dear Emily, I just found out that my wife does not like sex. She said she always <laughs> did like it, but she did any, but she did it to make me happy. What can I do to try to get her to like sex? Ken uh, from Ryan Liner, Wisconsin. Ryan Liner, Wisconsin. Wow. Okay, Ken. I just sometimes I wish people. Well, this we're going to be getting phones in here soon. Uh-huh. Does everyone know that, that they'll be calling in? Right, Menace. We're going to do yes. that. Yes. Because I've got questions for you, Ken. How long have you been together? How did you not know this? How long did she keep up the front that she did like sex? Because I don't know. I mean, I don't think you can try to convince someone to like sex, but I think there's things you could do to find out. I think she's got to, you know, you can talk about what she doesn't like about it. First, find out what she doesn't like about it. And maybe you could find from there some things. Maybe there are some things that she does like about it. You can be like, okay, you hate everything about it, but what's the one thing you like? And she maybe she says, I love kissing. Well, maybe you, we did a show on kissing yesterday. Maybe you really focus on kissing and you just focus on that only and enhancing that experience and maybe it'll expand to other areas. Now, a woman who doesn't like sex, I mean, it could be a lot of things. It could be that she has low libido. She could be taking medications. She might've been abused as a child. Sex, she might've had a history of sexual abuse. Um, or she might just have low libido and that just might be in her genetics or DNA. I don't know, but I don't think that it's as easy. I don't have a quick answer for you of how you can get her to like sex because I think the most important thing again is, and I know this is kind of a bummer, Ken, because, but you're going to have to do some work here talking to her or she needs to do some work around why she doesn't like it and what she does like and what she does like you work on and what she doesn't like. She might need to get some therapy around it. We don't know. We don't have all the answers, Yeah, but I can't have you can, I, I don't know how to tell you to get her to like, it's not like you can like yeah. show up in like a G string and she's going to be rocking yeah. or something. Or, you know, just throw it out there and say, Hey, why are you being such a bitch? <laughs> That's another tactic. That, that could work. I that would start recommend the that. conversation. <clears throat> but Ken, you have, I know that I, and, 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 and I, yeah. I cringe sometimes when I hear myself saying stuff like, you just got to talk to her. Because, Ken, you're emailing me because you probably don't want to talk to her. You just want to do something quick fix so you can get her to, uh-huh. to have sex with you again. And I'm telling you, this situation I hear from you, this, what I hear from this is a much more complicated situation. Yeah. Good luck. Godspeed. <clears throat> Godspeed. <laughs> just yesterday while having lunch at work, I opened a fortune cookie that happened to contain this message. Our first and last love is self-love. It may not have meant self-love in the sexual sense, i.e. masturbation, but ain't nothing like a little double entendre, Collins. <laughs> it's true. That is kind of a double entendre, right? Self-love. Because yeah. self-love, they say that, you know, masturbation is sex with someone you love. Yeah. And so our first and last, it is true. You were born alone. You die alone. Like, if you don't love yourself, here's another thing I'm just going to say. This is one of my big pieces of advice for people. If you're dating someone or you're in a relationship with someone who doesn't like themselves, I mean, we all have things about ourselves that we want to change. And we all have things about ourselves that, you know, we could work on that. We could lose 10 pounds. We could be nicer to our neighbors, to our family. But someone who truly doesn't like themselves, is not happy with themselves, mm-hmm. is not going to be a great match for you because they're always going to be looking to you to fill themselves up and to make themselves feel better. And we are the only ones who can make ourselves feel better. We are the only ones. Self-love truly is not just about masturbation. Although I appreciate this email because, you know, anything it could be. I mean, you can, you can extend it to masturbation. But really, someone who doesn't love themselves is not going to be lovable because they're just miserable and not happy with who they are. And yeah. they, that person has to work on their self-esteem. This is a tad. 
People hate yeah, themselves. Yeah. People hate themselves, it's, and it manifests in relationships. And if you're an angry person who hates yourself, you're going to be wreaking havoc on your partner. You're going to think that oh, your yeah. partner needs to make you happy, and your job needs to make you happy, and your new dog needs to make you happy, and your new car is going to make you happy. And guess what? You raise. Nothing is going to make you happy unless you love yourself and make yourself happy yeah. first. That is the bottom line. And the biggest frustration, I mean, from the male point of view, uh, is. When you try to compliment females and where they're really serious, like some will blow it off like, oh, you know, you're you're just saying that where it's, you know, lighthearted. Right. But some just like are really serious when when they don't believe you. And then when – then they also flip it where they're like, where is my comments? And you're not giving comments. But when you do give the comments, it's just like – The comments or the compliments? The compliments. OK. Where, oh, you're beautiful and like, no, I'm not. <sighs> No, I'm not. And I they're know. really serious and, and, about and how. And lots of women like that. Oh, Haven't you encountered a, a so lot. many women? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's really it's, frustrating. It's frustrating and it's really hard to get over. Like women have to do serious. And men. It's, men hate themselves too. Yeah. It's not just, you know, It's such equal a double-edged sword too because, okay, all right, do I not compliment them? And then they get they get mad about that. And then when I do compliment them, they don't believe me, and it's just... It's tough, because the truth is, really if bad. you don't love yourself, that there's nothing that anyone else can do. Like I just said, like your partner could tell you 15 times a day how beautiful you are, how amazing you are, but if you really feel bad, or you have bad body image, a lot of women suffer from um, body image issues, it's, it's not going to help. You have to just work on it yourself. That's mm-hmm. what I got to say. Okay. We actually... This show is flying by. We got to yeah. move into sex tips. Go for it. Okay. So, we just got through a few emails, but it's okay. Here is... Um, these are some common dating mistakes, and I want to see what you think about this. This is like common held belief, and I want and make me sure. And I think that you um, probably should try to avoid most of them, but we're going to debate them, and we're going to have them out here. Menace, ready? Never have sex on the first date. Some people say that. Dating rules are meant to be broken. If a love connection is there, then couples make up the rules as they go. But having sex on the first date immediately introduces complicated or unpleasant issues such as miscommunication over post-sex expectations. But that doesn't mm-hmm. mean you have to restrain from giving a little loving. Okay, again, a lot of these are phrases never, but I don't believe in never, never for anything. Like, I don't believe that you should never have sex on the first date, but I believe that there's no reason to have sex on the first date. Yeah, I uh, can I share a story? I had sex on a first date, and I ended up dating that girl for like I almost too. two years. I've done that too. I have. Like two and years. in fact, I was talking to a friend about this yesterday, and she said to me, every guy she's dated long term, she had sex with on the first date. Wow. Or like the second date. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know. What do you think about that? Should you have sex on the first date? I think it's bad. But I think that if you're thinking about it and you can wait, there is no reason to give it all up, to do it all on the first date. Yeah. There's because no. like why not create anticipation and some excitement? Mm-hmm. Like have them like touch your boobs and then next time touch something else or whatever. But like why rush into sex? I don't know. Okay. Don't check their email just to see what he's been up to. These, again, some relationship mistakes. Don't check his email or his voicemail or his regular mail for that matter. Such things are private and important personal boundaries to respect no matter if you're married or casually dating. Once you go down that road, it's hard to turn back. If you want to know what your partner's up to, ask them. So I believe that's true. I believe that you should, if you are having urges to check your partner's phone, you should ask them first. Be like, "I'm I'm feeling like maybe you are doing things behind my back or whatever it is. But once you start checking, like, you're just violating all these boundaries and you're always going to find something that you are going to believe in your mind is means that he's cheating or means uh-huh. that he, she's doing something off. Yeah. But I think that you just um, – I don't, I don't think it's ever good to do that. It's, it's just not right because yeah. you're, gonna, you're always going to find something that you don't understand and you don't have all the information and you can always twist everything around. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, in the beginning of the show, when I was I was telling my email story, like I am screwed. I have all my emails since 2005. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, so there's gonna be stuff in there. There's yeah. already probably over like forty thousand emails. Forty thousand. Yeah, That's a lot and it was of funny because when I was looking through that, uh, I saw a bunch of emails from like ex girlfriends. And I was just like laughing at him. Did you read them? I loved going oh, back yeah. and reading old emails. It was crazy. I, I have was 2006. Like, all my emails from 2006, I yeah. think. And mm-hmm. I – oh, my God. I was like making fun of myself. Like my my, my girlfriend was saying, um, uh, oh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be sending that over. And I was like, oh, thanks, you sexy thing. I'm like – That's so I, I like I'm you. like, I you said, said that. You said sexy thing? Yeah, I'm like – I really That's said so, that? I think you've gotten jaded. You should say things like that more often. No. Why? Why did you say it then and not now? Why would because you say you sexy thing and not now say it? 
I believe because the girl that I was with at that time, like I was super in love with. Oh. And then I think that, you know, I think being in that relationship taught me a lot of things. Taught you not to say you sexy thing? Not to be as gullible and, you know. Oh, so this is why you're so hard and cold. This is why you're so cold and hardened. Not just because of that relationship. Did she break your heart? Uh, I don't know if she broke my heart, but it was a really good... We got to get do like, some work around this relationship. Why? I, I just realized of... all your issues stem from this one relationship. No. Most of them. She does... When we get the phones in here, I'm sure she'd be happy to call. Okay, we're going to analyze She does radio, you. too, so she cool. wouldn't mind. Okay. She would think it's fun. So don't check their email. Okay, so never date someone who won't introduce you to their friends. Or be weary. Yeah. I'm not going to say never. These all say never. Be weary of a dude or a woman who like never introduces you to their friends. Yeah. Because being introduced to his or her friends is a pretty good sign that they're into you and the idea of the two of you. So though there's nothing wrong with little – and also don't tell them you Googled them. Like people keep telling me they Googled me when they date me. And I'm like I guess yeah. I assume they do because that's Emily. But like mm-hmm. I don't want to hear that. And um, But I think the friends thing is really important. And I think you learn a lot about a person by meeting their friends. So if mm-hmm. you've been dating someone for three months now and you've never met their friends, you've never met their family, I'd say three months is a pretty good – Yeah. Even two months. Like don't you think you should have met their friends by now or someone? Uh, Yeah. Or like at least – and if you're not, like, I think that says, like, what is what is he hiding? and Or what is she hiding? Does she have no friends? And that's another thing. That's another thing that I was going to say. Someone don't has no date friends. people that doesn't have don't friends. Don't date people who don't have friends, okay? Mm-hmm. I have a friend who was married and he's divorced now. And he said, I should have known she has no friends. And he was like, it was weird at our wedding. He had, like, six mm-hmm. bachelors. She, batch, whatever they're called. Um, uh, groomsmen. Groomsmen. And she couldn't even, like, muster up three. Like, uh-huh. she had to, like, find random friends. Like, that is not a good sign because... Yeah. If you have friendships and you relate, shows a lot. It tells a lot about your character. Yeah. So watch out for that. Never hook up with siblings, like with what? Like with <laughs> two bro- with two brothers. Oh, okay. Two sisters. Yeah, yeah. A sister, you know, not at the same time, but you could. Mm. Or roommates. It says so. You shouldn't hook up with siblings or roommates. I think that's unavoidable. I think people hook up with siblings all the time. Like you date someone mm. brother, you didn't work out with the brother, but maybe his brother. I thought his older brother was cuter, and I went out with him. Yeah, but you can avoid hooking up with men or women who are close. Is sure to result in a dating dilemma. It might be a dilemma, but if you're really honest about it, and like, let's say you dated, a, let's say you dated a sister, menace, and you and the sister went out twice, three times, it didn't work out. Mm-hmm. But then, like a few months later, you meet like the younger sister, and you probably should check. Hopefully, they're close enough that they can discuss if it's cool. Yeah, but I, how many uh, times this could be a pitfall? This could be. This could be <laughs> what. You did uh, that? No, I've dated sisters. I like I hooked up with one and dated one for quite a while, and then you know you're you're out at the nightclub. You had a couple martinis, martinis a little bit, you know, and uh, you know, and then so next thing you know, Was you're making problem? out with the sister. Was there cat fights? There wasn't cat fights because the best friend of the girl that I dated before was like she wasn't. She's like. She's like, that's cool that you guys are doing that. She's like, just don't let such and such find right. out. Right, and did she never find out? I don't know if they ever did. But it, you know what? I think I hung out with the the sister again uh-huh. after that and never hung out with the the one that I made out with at right? the club. And she would not like hook up with me ever again. She wouldn't? She's like, no, dude, I think, I think they did talk. I don't think I've ever – I think like, that would be cool, weird. I got to but... be honest. There's so many people in the world. Why, why dabble in the same family? Yeah. Like, I, I think it's good to avoid that kind of thing, yeah. personally. I think but, it was just a circumstances of yeah, location and timing. Yeah, I was drunk. You know, I'll just be like a chick and just blame it on being drunk all the you time. You do blame it on you, you do. You are a chick who blames it on being drunk all the time. No, I don't. Dude. I just promote being drunk all the time. I know. <laughs> are you going to get drunk this weekend? Uh, no. I'm driving to the party, and you know I don't drink and drive. I right. don't condone drinking and driving ever. Ever? Never, ever drink yeah. and drive. So I am... I'm driving everybody to the party, so I'll not be drinking then. Uh, Saturday, maybe. I have no plans. Maybe a little drinking then. And then uh, Sunday, I'm working. Okay, and even if I'm at concerts working, okay. do not drink. Okay, I got to keep going here, Menace. Go ahead. Okay, so don't talk about things your previous lovers did in bed. I 100% Why? Who does that? People do this all the Why? freaking time. We get emails about this all the time. Noting a former lover's prowess will only create performance anxiety and unnecessary concern. Yeah. The second you're like, oh, well, this last guy I was with, I had multiple orgasms, and then he spun me around, and then he gave me this amazing massage, and then he made me eggs benedict, or whatever. Why? Like, do not, you do not want to put the image, I'm talking from a female perspective, mm. but it's the same with men. 
we don't want to hear about that hot babe you slept with, with the blonde, with the whatever's, the big boobs, and the, I don't even know. I say blonde because yeah. I'm brunette. I don't want to hear any stories because you cannot shake those images from your mind. You think you're not measuring up. Just keep your sexual history in the past, what it is, history. Yeah. And never – We've said this a billion times on the show. Never give out your sex number. Never give out your number. Ever, okay. Also, ever. never ask your partner which of your friends they would sleep with if he wasn't with you. Why? People what do people? this all the they're time. High. They do. They might be high. They're on maybe drugs. They, maybe they're, they're maybe this. they're doing drugs. But really, you can you can have a perfectly happy relationship and completely turn it upside down with that simple question. Because yeah. then every time that friend comes along, you're like, he just wants a boner. He wants a boner. Yeah. You want to bone Katie, don't you? You want to bone Katie. Yeah. You want to bone Bob or whatever. You know, it's like you gotta be careful about that. Just don't reveal this stuff. Never reveal the number of sexual partners. We talk yeah. about that all the time. That is very important. And never fake an orgasm. Women or men? Men fake orgasms. Don't listen to her. But people. especially, why? Huh? What do you mean don't listen to me? I'm, I'm, you think women should fake orgasms? All the time. Because it makes you feel better? Yeah. No, it is sending <laughs> a bad message to everyone in the world. This guy thinks that he's rocking your world. How is it sending a message world? to the world? It's like, said, are people are like viewing your, your, uh, your sex session? <laughs> never fake it, even if you think faking it is a selfless, compassionate act that will spare his feelings. It does neither of you any good. You are betraying both. This is the key. When you fake an orgasm, you are betraying both of your sexual needs and your partner's trust in your sexual communication. So why not say, you know what, honey? I'm not getting there. I kind of need a little bit of this. And then Mm -hmm. get to the orgasm. Otherwise, if you fake it, it's a slippery slope. Then you got to fake it every time, and it's just sending a bad message. Every time you fake an orgasm, you train your body to believe the fake orgasm is all you're getting. How many times has guys faked orgasms with you? Uh, Never. (laughs) <laughs> what? I'm sure they have. I don't know. <laughs> Guys, it's, it's surprising because when we did this show, yeah. we've talked about this before. And I actually <laughs> did a show once that... and I got tons of callers from yeah. guys who were like, yeah, I fake it. And it's hard for guys to fake it because uh-huh. they have to – They a lot of them ejaculate when they have orgasms. Yeah. Many men do ejaculate when they have orgasms. Um, but I guess if there's a condom on, you can kind of just – Yeah, you can kind of go – Have you faked it? No, no. No, no. no I'm no, going no, no. in. I'm going in for the long haul. Like I – I'm not going to stop and tell all I do. You okay. know? Never ask if it's in yet. <laughs> that would be insulting. Nothing will bring your partner down like asking them if it's in yet. Okay. And never be afraid to show them what feels good. A person who is, you know, sexual confidence is huge in the mm-hmm. bedroom. So that's what we got time for today. Wow, and I also flew be- by. Flew by. Yeah. I know. But I also have to give a shout out to Adam and Eve who is our loyal, loyal, loyal sponsor, and they've got the best sex toys on the planet. Everything that you want. They have laundry, they have porn, but they have sex toys. And they're having a huge sale right now. But plus, if you just go there and you use coupon code EMILY at checkout, you get 50% off most items, and you get three adult DVDs, you get free shipping, you get another free thing, like a free gift. Like, it's crazy what you got. So just go online and get your sex toys up this weekend. It's Friday. Go buy a sex toy. It's time. Everyone, thanks so much for listening to the show. Um, I appreciate everyone for listening to Sexual Emily and becoming friends with benefits members. Was it good for you? Email me feedback at sexwithemily.com. Thanks for listening to Sex with Emily. One of the reasons you're able to listen to us for free is because of the incredible people at Good Vibrations. Good Vibrations is a sex positive store carrying the best toys with an informative website at goodvibes.com. I got my very first toy from Good Vibrations, so I've been a fan for a long time, and they never disappoint. They have a huge online store at goodvibes.com, and you can literally find anything on there from toys to DVDs to games. Just click on the Good Vibrations banner at sexwithemily.com and enter coupon code GVEMILY20 for 20% off on orders of $100 or more. So check it out. You'll help yourself, and you'll help keep Sex With Emily free, just like it should be. Thanks for listening. I promise your sex life will improve.